Welcome back, everyone. This is Liz Faircloth. And I am Andressa Gidelli. We are the hosts of the Investor Podcast. We have a mini-sode edition here. We're going to be talking about debt, which is not always a fun topic, right, Andressa? Fun topic. Can't wait. <laughs> but it is, it is a really big topic for not just real estate investors, but Americans. I actually saw a statistic that in early in 2024, household debt was close to $17 trillion meaning that it is affecting people in all walks of life, especially us real estate investors. I'm not going to talk about $17 trillion, but I'm going to be talking about a half a million dollars that my husband and I had in debt and how we were able to get through that, move through it, and not only pay the money back, but what habits we needed to have. And that's what we focused on today. I want to talk a little bit about, before I jump into my four kind of steps, habits that we took when we were getting out of debt. I want to share a little bit about why we got onto debt because a lot of people are curious, right? And just, they're like, give us the story of- Was that a goal? (laughs) Let me get into $500,000 in debt. Exactly. Right? I was like, you know, we have nothing else to do and we're just going to get into it. Let me make all the mistakes and, and get into it. You know, it's, it's interesting, right? Because I think about our journey and I, I've shared this in different circum, you know, different podcasts and, and speaking, but our journey is our journey and I'm grateful for it. But getting into a half a million dollars of debt was not easy and it was overwhelming at times. And honestly, there was a lot of shame to be perfectly frank and honest with, with everyone listening. Uh, and it was hard. So for me to fir- first, I just want to say that it was hard, but I, but we got through it. And, and this is what really helped us. And, and, and very succinctly, what, what got us into the debt wasn't credit card debt, because that's hard to do, right? A half a million dollars in credit card debt. But what, what Your actually- bags. <laughs> Your bags. Yes. You Your know, bags, I love it. Ex- Matt's cars. Right, right. Exactly. You know how I'm a designer. If you said, Liz, name three top designers, I don't know if I could. <laughs> um, so it was definitely not that. But what we ended up doing very, you know, back, back in the day when you could do this kind of stuff, both my parents, my parents and my husband's parents had homes free and clear. And, uh, this is right before the crash, but we, it was like 2006 and many years ago. And, uh, we ended up getting a line of credit against both of those homes and we can pretty much use it. It was an unsecured line of credit. So literally you can use it for whatever you want on anything you want. No strings attached. Uh, I think it's a different world now. I have a now. question about that. How was yeah. that conversation with your parents? Getting the money or how long it took to pay them off? Which which conversation? The first conversation about, listen, I know your house is uh, free and clear and we don't have experience in real estate. We want to play with your freaking money. And, <laughs> you, and by the way, if we <laughs> lose it, you're done with the house. I know it was like Those that. Those are all facts. But in, in a hindsight... That's exactly what it was, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those are very good points. We did have a plan. So I would say we didn't, we didn't just shoot from the hip. Obviously we did have a plan. We had an intention of where we were going to put this money. At that point too, we had bought some property. So we were not completely newbies in, in all fairness and all fairness to us. But yet were we these seasoned real estate investors? No. Uh, no, by no means. So what it really came down to, Andressa, in, in hindsight was that my, my parents and his parents bet on us, not so much our business plan or the real estate deals because they didn't know much about real estate either. These, they're not moguls in real estate investing. And, and I'm grateful for that. And we did pay it off. We made it right. Uh, so everything worked out. It just the time frame and the way that we use the money and, and, and all the learnings there weren't necessarily what I would have preferred. But I, you know, it, it, as we were just talking on Joseph before the episode, that is a really important strategy. Still bet on people, bet on the operator more than the deal, more than the business plan, because business plans can go astray. Markets change. Interest rates are, are, are going, we're going up what a year ago. And so many seasoned syndicators were not even prepared for that, like really successful syndicators. So things are going to happen out of our control, but it's the person, it's the people that quite honestly make the difference, right? So it was a big lesson for me. And it was a very, and Andressa knows this because I think we were halfway through paying it off when I met you. I don't think we were fully paid off of this. And it was quite honestly about two years ago that I paid it all off. So a few things I want to share in terms of of, of the steps and, and things that we did. Number one, and this is a big one, don't be attached to the how, be attached to the what and the why. 
So I'll say that again. Don't be attached to the how, but be attached to the what and the why. So here's what I mean by that. The what is the goal, right? Paying off this debt, whether it's 10,000, whether it's a half a million or more. The what is the goal? And that's what you need to focus on. What is that goal? And I, I, I'm a firm believer when you're, when you're paying off debt, no matter the amount, putting into small winnable chunks, small chunks really matters versus like, I'm going to wake up and pay off a half a million. Like who wants to do that? I mean, that's just, that's just overwhelming. You know, that's a lot. So you have to break it up. The, the second one is the why. And the why is, why do I want that goal? Obviously we had a lot on the line. And when we connected with that, we really got clear on our, our what and stayed focused on our what. Our why was paying off these lines of credit so that we can make our, my, our parents' houses whole. But more importantly, we have aging parents. We have siblings. God forbid one of them died, right? And, and that's stuff that we thought about, right? Those are real things that we needed to know what we were going to do, which we had a plan. Uh, because that's stuff you have to think about. So, so, so many people get so enamored with the, with the, with the how. How am I going to do this? How are we going to pay a half a million dollars off? Right. I, I didn't have a silver bullet, but I focus on the goal. I focus on the why, and then I focus on the small steps to get us there. So, I think that's a really important, you know, first, first, uh, you know, strategy in in getting out of debt. The second one's a little more personal, Andressa. Um, the there's so many people that beat themselves up for, for getting into the debt that it blinds them to help them get out of the debt. So let me give you an example. You know, there were things we would have done differently, right? It, meaning we use that money and I'll be very frank. It wasn't like we went to Atlantic City or, or went anywhere crazy uh, or use that money on non real estate investments. But we made some early on investments that we probably shouldn't have, but we did. And we also bought long-term assets that we didn't have an exit plan, like meaning, okay, how are we going to pull this money out? That's what a line of credit is for. And you'd be like, Liz, didn't you know that? <laughs> um, we did. We did. However, we were a little more hopeful. We were a little more, we weren't as astute with our numbers at the time. You know, so those things kind of, I think, you know, are, are learnings for us. But so we had assets that they were attached to, of course. But the key was that, I was beating, we were beating ourselves up when we, when we kind of realized, okay, we really need to have a, a, a plan B here. Selling this property or refinancing these properties is not going to pay off this line of credit. We need to create money elsewhere to, to do that. And so that was a, that was a very sobering moment, Andressa. I mean, we had a, I had a lot of moments of crying. Um, and just like, holy shit. Like, honestly, it's holy shit. Like, last thing I want to do is ever, uh, put my parents in a position that's not, you know, um, advantageous here. But if I spent all the time beating myself up, I wouldn't have been in action mode and really focused on the future. Because when I, when you really get down to it, debt is not going to get paid by, by, you know, the ethers. It's going to happen by small steps and staying focused. So I just think that's a big one. So, so those listening, don't beat yourself up, learn from it. Don't make the same mistake, but learn from it and get into action mode and, and, and solution mode. I think the other thing that was hard to do, Andressa, the third one, to celebrate. I mean, there was a, there was a moment that we paid, we did a flip. I don't think it was with you. Uh, we, we made about $10,000 on the flip, which was, which was, you know, we were, we were a little frustrated at first because we were expecting a little to make a little more, but we did make about 10,000. We put 10,000. I think it was one of the first steps towards our 500,000. And at first you're like, Wow, that really didn't make too much of a, of a difference. And now we're at 490. Uh, however, it really was very, it made a difference. It, it really showed us to celebrate those small steps and it created that momentum because we had sw small wins and then we, you know, we were able to sell some buildings that really quite honestly were the way we were able to, to pay off the bigger chunks. We couldn't just do it by flips for $10,000, right? The fourth one was a lesson that I wish I had done differently, Andressa, in hindsight, knowing what I know now. And the lesson is don't go it alone. What I mean by that is in my husband and I were aware of what was going on. I might have shared it with you, Andressa. Um, I don't know if I ever went into that much detail with you. It's not something I really honestly wanted to spend a lot of time talking about. Uh, it made me feel bad, it made me feel less than, right? To be perfectly frank and authentic with everyone. So 
I think though, in hindsight, I think I should have shared it more with people, not just to share it from a therapeutic perspective, but sharing it from a solution perspective. I, I think we went at it alone for many years and it took us a long time to pay it off. I, I, in hindsight, I, and I think about the power of community and the power of what we're doing with investor on Jessa. And I, I wish I shared it with maybe a smaller group of people and said, Hey, this is how we're approaching this. What would you do? And what would you do differently than what we're doing to get to the goal? I, I really wish we'd done that, both of us. And, uh, and it's a learned lesson, right? To not go it alone. Um, in addition to all the things that we did do. So that's the fourth one, I think would be my lesson to move into additional, you know, steps and additional, uh, business ventures. It's just don't go it alone. Yeah. I think that's very powerful, right? The power of leverage. It doesn't really matter what strategy it is, what's your situation, what feelings you have attached. The power is in there. You never know what somebody might come from a completely different perspective that you are not even expecting. And you're like, wait a minute, this was in front of me because looking back, it's so clear, right? Looking back is so clear. How about if you're speaking with somebody that is looking back, then you bypass all that time that you're going to have to learn what it is. Right now, you are able to look back and see exactly what you could have done so tapping into somebody that is already way ahead of you because they're going to be looking back can really expedite um, to solve or to achieve any goal. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's really what you and I are committed to doing with our investor community, with our, everyone listening, our investor community. And that's why I feel like is one of the most powerful outcomes of InvestorCon is that you start to, not just you're, you're listening to 30 speakers we have coming, you're connecting with the women there, the sponsors, you're, but you're able to be in these conversations with women playing at the same level that you normally wouldn't be in, right? On a Tuesday afternoon in your hometown. So come, come join us, play in that arena, you know, and get a chance to talk to women and help, th help them solve what's coming up for them. And they're going to solve and help you with where you are and where you want to go. We have a lot of great, I know, Andressa, we've been cooking some amazing kind of really mindful, strategic networking exercises during the conference, let alone the stuff that's going to happen when you have breaks. So just super pumped. Click on the link in our show notes and definitely come join us. It's investhercon.com and June 2nd to 4th. You got to be there. So do something with what you learned today, what you heard, that you're inspired. Take that one action step. And thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much.